Okay, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, this is a new series that we're starting, uh, and the, the series is called uh, Morning is Rebuilding. Uh, and uh, it's a three-part series. Uh, today we're gonna primarily talk about the concept of why we have to mourn, uh, what's the, what we're supposed to gain out of mourning, uh, and uh, hopefully the other two classes will go more into uh, the concept of uh, the three weeks, uh, Tish above lessons that we're supposed to learn from uh, those uh, experiences uh, and delve more into uh, the Tish above uh, experience uh, when uh, the next couple of weeks, uh, the next week and the following week. But today primarily uh, I want to talk about more the idea of mourning and what does mourning have to, uh, what's the beneficial of mourning and why do we have to mourn. So I'm going to start off with a very famous uh, very, very famous passage in the Talmud, two passages in the Talmud. Uh, one is in the Talmud, the Jerusalem Talmud, in Tractate Yuma, and the other one is in the Babylonian Talmud, uh, and in the, that's in Tractate Tainus. And the, the, tra the, 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 the statement goes like this. One of them says, every generation in which the temple is not rebuilt is to be regarded as responsible for its destruction. Right? Well, if, 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 if the temple is not rebuilt in our generation, you imagine it is as if we destroyed it we're two and a half thousand years later and since the temple has not been rebuilt in our generation there's still time guys you know <laughs> we still have uh, two and a half weeks left right but you know if it's not rebuilt it's as if we destroyed it what does that mean what does that mean exactly well we didn't destroy it that's statement number one we're gonna have to answer that statement number two it is that the Talmud says in tractate uh, in the Babylonian Talmud, whoever mourns over Jerusalem will merit in sharing her joy, the rebuilding of Jerusalem. And so whoever mourns over Jerusalem will merit to be able to see the rebuilding of Jerusalem. That's a beautiful thing. That's a great thing. So the question over here is, what does that mean? Right? Uh, why, if I mourn over it, am I going to be able to merit to, to see it? Uh, you know, what, 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 what's the connection between the two? So you could say it's sort of like a, um, sort of like a, a, a reward, right? Some say that if you mourn over it, then it's a reward that you get to uh, see it, right? Uh, you did what you had to do. God says, okay, uh, I, was, I think I was frozen there for a little bit. I'm sorry, guys. Um, so, so some say, as we said, some say it's a reward. Now, it's, it, that it's possible. But we're going to take a deeper understanding of what that means. So, um, yeah, sorry, everything froze for a minute. Thank you, Kyla. So, so, so let's take a deeper understanding. Now, to, to, to really understand what this means, right? So the, the commentaries explain that really the two, uh, the, the, the two statements uh, complement each other, really fill each other in. The one hand is looking at it sort of from the negative perspective. If you don't do, just like we have in the mitzvot, we have the negative commandments and we have the positive commandments. And so if you don't do this, if it's not rebuilt, right, then it's as if you destroyed it, sort of a punishment. And if it, if it is rebuilt and if you mourn over it, right, so then you'll see the reward will be that you'll be able to share in her joy. Now, it doesn't say if it's rebuilt in your generation. It says if you mourn over it. So if the two things are supposed to complement each other, what does that mean exactly? <laughs> One is saying that if it's not rebuilt, so that means to say the opposite should be that if it is rebuilt, right? And, 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 and the other one that says if you just mourn means to say that if you don't mourn. So why does it have to say if it's not rebuilt? So how, how do the two things work together? And the commentaries say they do, they complement each other. So how do the two things work together? So the, 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 the commentaries explain that if the, if the temple's not rebuilt, and again, some, some do take it very literal, right? but the commentaries say that if the, if the temple's not rebuilt in our generation, that doesn't mean to say necessarily right, that you're considered uh, that considered like as if you destroyed the temple yourself. As we said, we didn't. It's two and a half thousand years later. All right, so what is it what is it's bringing out? So it's bringing out a sharp uh, idea of why the concept of mourning. 
if you don't mourn over the temple, then it as if the more the temple is being redestroyed again because it's there's no purpose for the mourning. I mean, sorry, there's no purpose for the destruction because you're not mourning over it. So meaning to say the destruction creates a mourning, and we're supposed to mourn. We're supposed to miss Avil. We're supposed to mourn over the temple. If we're not mourning over the temple, so then the destruction of the temple is for nada, it is not for the right reason. And therefore, it's as if we're redestructing again. We're as if we're 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 we're, we're, we're destroying the temple again. We just say because we're not helping the building of the temple. Because when we mourn, then we're helping the building of the temple, and and that's what it says. If you mourn over the temple, then you'll be able to see the joy when the temple is rebuilt. Not necessarily will it rebuilt in this year, but by mourning. You're allowing, you're fulfilling the purpose of the destruction. And when something's, the, the purpose of something's fulfilled, then eventually it could get to the next stage. Right? Uh, just an example of playing video games, uh, doing, growing in your job, or whatever it is that you're doing, you have to finish that level. Right? If you don't finish that level, then you can never get to the next level. Uh, if you didn't finish all your different uh, uh, tasks, right, for this job or for this stage where that you are in the company, then you never go to the next task, to the next level. You never get new tasks. So the morning, morning is avel, is is part and parcel of the destruction. There was a destruction in order for us to mourn. There was a destruction in order for us to mourn. So if, we're, if we don't mourn, so that means to say that the destruction was for nada because we're not, we're not, we're not going ahead and, and mourning. And, and, and if we do mourn, that means to say that we're fulfilling it and we're building it up. We're, we're, we're allowing the fulfillment of the destruction to be complete. Now, when is that going to be complete? That's up to the one above. Hopefully soon, hopefully very soon. But we're, we're helping it to be fulfilled. And then, right, and then we are going ahead and eventually we're, we're helping us get to the next stage where the temple will be rebuilt. And therefore, it's as if we are really rebuilding the temple. So, so that's how the two things complement each other. That's how the two statements complement each other. But what does it tell us? And this is really the point I want to bring out, right? Uh, what is it telling us? It's telling us that the, 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 the misavel, the mourning process, is part and parcel of the purpose of the destruction, right? It's part and parcel of the, the, the purpose of the destruction. That is, a, the mourning process is, is part and parcel of that. The question is why? What's the purpose of that? Why is it that the, the mourning process is part and parcel of the destruction? What are we supposed to learn from that? What are we supposed to gain from that, right? That is, that, that is a, 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 a new insight that I think right of 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 reflecting and realizing what's really the the morning the, the concept of the morning so i want to i want to start this, this is an introduction right i want to start this with a fascinating story right uh you some of you might have heard the story there's a couple of different versions of the story right i don't know i i've i've seen it written in some very reliable uh svarim even uh, jewish books um and the story goes like this, that Napoleon, the ruler of France, right, uh, was once passing by uh, the entrance to a synagogue on Tishba. Now, the place I've seen it this year was, it was in Paris. Uh, another place I've seen it was in Poland when he was, um, when he was uh, conquering Poland and fighting against Russia, right, and he happened to pass by a Jewish synagogue. He wanted to know where they were, weren't they celebrating, right, and they told him that it's their, it's their day of mourning, it's, it's Tishba. However way the story is, right, if it was in Paris or it was in Poland and wherever it was, right, the, the story goes like this. The, Napoleon asks, why are they mourning? What, what's going on? What are they doing? Why are they crying? Why are they sitting on the floor and, 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 and fasting? What are they doing? So they told him, he said, oh, Napoleon said, you have to understand, today is the day that their temple uh, was destroyed and their land was destroyed and they were exiled. He said, really? When did this happen? I'm a historian. I don't remember this happening, right? He said, oh, this happened about 2,000 years ago. And he said, really? And there's still mourning? He said a statement like this. 
He was quoted as saying, I swear that in the end, this nation will enjoy goodness in their own land. But where do we find another nation in the world that preserves its mourning and its aspiration for thousands of years and is not diminished? So th this gives us a little insight, right? And, and the way I heard it was slightly different. He said, uh, a nation that mourns over the destruction of something for 2,000 years and will eventually, will never be, will never be removed from that homeland and eventually will return. So a similar idea. But, but what, what do we see? We see that, 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 that God in his ultimate wisdom knew the, 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 the way, workings of man because he created it and, and made us realize that by mourning, by, by Miss Avel, we are reconnecting to, to something that, yes, happened thousands of years ago. But what, what we're really doing is, is we're, 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 we're staying the course of who we're supposed to be. We're staying the course of who we're supposed to be. Because when we go ahead and we mourn, if it's for a loved one, if it's for the temple, Right? If it's for whatever it is that one is mourning, and whatever it is that one is mourning, right? a, a severe mourning or a, a more light, a loss of, a loss of a job, whatever, it is, it's connecting you. It's making you realize that you had something better. You had something better, and therefore the state that you're in right now is not really the best thing. There's a very famous story that is said, and I actually said this once in a sermon, Right uh, when I was giving the sermon when our fish was out of town, right a uh, very famous story that is said that during the Six Day War, right uh, the Jew the, the the Israeli army captured Yerushalayim, the other half of Yerushalayim, the Kotel. They captured the Kotel. It was an unbelievable experience, right? Uh, people that were dur lived during that time, right, and and especially the soldiers that that were were that 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 burst through the walls of Jerusalem. And they ran and they got to the Kotel. And there's a very famous picture of, of, of them dancing there and, and some soldiers against the wall. And the story is told of it. one of the soldiers started weeping, right? Started weeping, right? And a lot of the soldiers were weeping and kissing the Kotel. But one of them was, was, was weeping. And, uh, and he, another soldier, a friend of his, went over to him and said, listen, Javer, my friend, says, nothing against you, but I know that you're a chiloni, should be chiloni. You don't believe in anything. You don't believe in, in God, right? You're an atheist, right? You grew, up, uh, you, you grew up with no connection to Judaism at all, right? You're a Jew and you're proud of it, but nothing spiritual, nothing religious. I don't hold it against you, but why are you crying over here? <laughs> what does this have anything to do with you? And this is, we're celebrating the Kotel, which means to say we're celebrating something that has some kind of spirit. So this is another wall. And he told him like this, he said, he said, Lama ta boche? Why are you crying? He said, Ani boche, amashani lo boche. I'm crying because I don't know why I'm not crying. I don't know why I'm crying. Why I'm not crying? I don't know. I want to cry. I see everybody else crying. I see everybody else has its connection. I don't know what to cry about. That's why I'm crying. So, so again, this shows us the idea of of, of mourning. The idea of the, the whole concept of mourning is for you to realize what you lost. Now we understand that with a loved one. And we understand that, uh, God forbid, if someone, you know, uh, not to compare, God forbid, right, uh, the death and, 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 and financial loss, whatever it is, someone lost something, you lose something. There's different levels of mourning, different, different levels of, 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 of pain and then mourning. Of course, the highest level is, is losing a loved one. But, but you, 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 you're mourning because of what you lost. And that's why the laws of mourning Right? There's many laws about the concept of people are you're supposed to speak about the loved one, right? People are supposed to comfort you, but in the way they're not really supposed to initiate conversation. You're supposed to initiate conversation because you're supposed to start. You're the one that's supposed to bring up the memories that you should remember what you lost. But the idea of mourning is, is that you should recognize that you lost something. 
said the said this Israeli shows. I don't remember what I lost. I'm crying. I don't even know what I lost. I'm standing here at the wall. Everybody's so excited. What's the difference between this wall and another wall? You know, it's, it reminds me of a, a joke that is said, not to put one next to another, but it reminds me of a joke that said, you know, there's a, a group of tourists coming to the Kotel. You know, I lived in Eretz Yisrael, a lot of you know, right? And you always see tourists by the Kotel, right? And with their, with their phone, or they used to be with, the, you know, the big cameras on over their neck. Now it's with all their selfie sticks, right? The times has changed, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, they're all there. And, and their tour guide, uh, they, they, and one tour guide actually comes by on and uh, they, um, they, they ask the tour guide, why is everybody sitting on the floor? Why are they crying? Like, what, what's going on over here? So he told him, oh, let me tell you the history of this. And he said, this used to be a magnificent building over here. It was a great temple. It was a great, uh, unbelievable structure and, and a spiritual place for the Jewish people. And, and it was destroyed by fire. So they're mourning over it. They're, they're crying over the destruction. So one guy turns to the other guy and says, I don't understand. They didn't have insurance. You know, so, you know, for some people, it's like, okay, it's insurance. You know, you get something, you know. But, but, but we understand, right, that there's, there's something deeper behind there. Right? But this Israeli soldier said, I don't know why I'm not crying. So back to our, our, our initial start of the two statements, and then we're going to go a little more into what we're crying about, what we're mourning about that allows us to, to start the rebuilding process. Now we understand a little better what it means by the statement of the Talmud and how the two things are contrasting each other. The statement in the Talmud, the Jerusalem Tal Talmud, that says that whoever, when, when every generation the temple is now rebuilt as if they destroyed it, doesn't mean to say, as we explained, that it's not it's literally not literally built. It means to say that they're not doing anything to rebuild it. They're not mourning over it. So by not mourning over it, by not knowing what you lost, it's as if it's 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 gone. It's not no no it existed. The whole concept of mourning is to remember what we what we're losing. So it keeps it alive. It keeps us with us. That's that's the second statement of the Talmud in the Drew in the Babylonian Talmud that says whoever does mourn whoever does miss avel will see in the rebuilding and the joy of it because we're, we're building it up because everything has a, a cause and in effect the cause of the destruction was for us to be able to mourn over it to recognize what we lost because during that time we moved away from it you know when you don't have something you want it but, but eventually over time, we could forget, but the concept of mourning is to remind us, to constantly remind us what we forgot. So that is the effect of the, of the destruction of the temple and allows us to connect, to start rebuilding it. Because when we start mourning, what we're doing is, is we're putting those blocks slowly but surely one on top of the other because we're reminding ourselves what we lost. We're building ourselves up, and, and, and God, God willing, we'll never be like that soldier that we say we don't know what we're crying about. So, so this is stage one of understanding, in general, what the concept of mourning is. But especially during these days that we're in, we're, we're in the three weeks. We started the three weeks last week on Thursday with the beginning of, with the fast of Sivash of the 17th, 17th of Tammuz. And it concludes, climax with Tisha B'Av. So we're in this morning period. Yes, so there's stages. Climbing to, excuse me, climbing to Tisha B'Av. But we have to understand what we're mourning about. Or what's the idea of mourning? So this is stage one of our conversation. And again, just a reminder for those that joined later, or if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to write it in the comment. Right, either on Facebook, right, or on the chat and Zoom, and I'll be more than happy to answer questions uh, if you write a question on either in the comments or on on Zoom, on the chat. So that's stage one. Now, what we have to understand is what are we mourning, and what does it mean that we have to know what we're mourning, right? So, and again, every everything that you're mourning for, you have to know what that is. So I saw this beautiful piece from Rav Chaim Friedlander. And uh, he says this beautiful idea. He says like this, he says that when the Jewish people came back 
Now, imagine the scenario, destruction of the temple one, that right? first temple, right? There's two, we're, we mourn over two temples. So 70 years later, right? However you did the calculation, right? Haman mixed, mixed up the calculation, that's a firm story. Finally, 70 years later, from whenever it was 70 years, they finally come back to the land of Israel and they're about to build the second temple and they build the second temple. Says the Talmud, says the, it's a, Madra, a Talmud, I think it is, or it's a Madras, I don't remember offhand, I apologize. Right? But says that there was two categories of people. It says the younger generation was all excited. Right? Oh my gosh, we're facing us. We're, we're going to go into the temple. We're going to be able to bring sacrifices. Right? Because they grew up in, 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 in Babylon. They grew up in Babel. They grew up in Persia. They didn't know about the temple. Maybe when they were little kids, but most of them even when they weren't little kids, 70 years. They're all excited. And then he said, you got the second category, the elders who remember the first temple, right? 70 years, so they say they're 90 now, they're 20 years old, they can remember it. Very well, they can remember it. It says they were saddened. They didn't have as much of excitement. It says why? Because they remember the, the first temple. This first temple had great miracles. Fire came down from heaven and other great miracles. There was the, the ark and other great things that the second temple didn't have. So he says, he says we, have to, we have to realize that everything has its perspective of what we're coming from. So, so, so now let's think about where we're coming from. We're 2,000 years later, over 2,000 years later. What are we mourning about? How, how do we think about mourning? Right? And it's, it's, it's so ingrained in our prayer, which is Shalayim Ercha. Right? We, we say Vinyan Yushalayim and, and our benching. But we, we, every as we, 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 we break a glass at, our, at a wedding, we, we're so entrenched in, in, in Drew, but it's actions that we're doing. How do we, how do we connect to it? Right? What, what, do we, what do we even think of, 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 of comprehending a, a mourning for something like this? How do we do it? We're, we're, like, we're, we're like those young, youngers Right, uh, people and the younger people can be fifty. Right, they're still born <laughs> in, uh, in 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 Persia. Right, because uh, of seventy year exile. Right, so there was like the the, the the second generation that came and they were so excited because they didn't know about the first one. So he says like this. He says something very important. He says therefore it is incumbent upon us to learn and understand the deep concept of the destruction and to feel and understand how our situation has declined from the time of the destruction until now. So there's two ways of missing something. There's two ways of, of knowing that you're lacking something. Number one is, is, is how great it was, right? How great it was, right? The, 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 the unbelievable concept of of, of the spirituality of it, right? Uh, the, 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 the fire, the, the sacrifices, the spiritual idea, all the great things that there was, right? The spiritual levels that one could attain. But let's be realistic. That's a little beyond us right now, right? And yes, it's important. And we'll talk about it probably at another time, right? And, and we'll delve into other ideas but it's a little beyond us. And there's some that go ahead and learn, uh, you know, about uh, the Talmud speaks about the miracles of the temple and the great joyous time they had in the temple and the Simcha Spacious Sheva that they had in the temple. And those are important things and I'm not knocking it, God forbid. But it's still, even when we're learning that, it's still a little foreign to us. But you know what we could know? You know what we could understand? Is the suffering that we've had since the destruction of the temple. So, you know, we, we, our human nature a lot of times is that we think things are good. We're, we're doing okay right now, right? We're doing okay. You know, yeah, of course there's problems and there, there's this problems and there's, there's Corona, right? And there's, and there's this and there's that and, and, and then the personal problems. And, but overall, right? Right? Uh, 
what are some of the essential themes of the candidates? Of so Caroline, it's a great question. Caroline's asking a question from Facebook, and it's a great question. Oh, as I said in the introduction, we're gonna the, probably this the last class is gonna go into uh, more into the details of Tisha B'Av itself um, and some of the kinos. Um, but today, today's class is more of a general idea. So it's a great question. Um, God willing, the last class, uh, we're going to get into some of the ideas of the kinos and some of the, the Tisha B'Av directly of, of, the, of, of the questions on Tisha B'Av. Right? Um, so let's wait, let's hold off on that for, for the last class. The last class will be uh, the Tuesday before Tisha B'Av, actually. Um, so, so let's let's get back to our our topic. Um, so, 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 like this, right? So we we have to we, we what we have to do, right? Is we have to uh, understand, right? The the hardships that we have, right? We have to understand the the hardships that we have, right? We have to we have to um, we have to understand. Uh, so sorry, uh, let me. Let me take a step back. So we're talking about that, yes, we have all these hardships, right? But at the same time, right, unless there's a catastrophe of a Holocaust, right, unless there's a catastrophe of a Holocaust, right, or other things like that, which God willing, we would should never have again, right? But overall, right, overall, we, we, we think that we're, we're cruising through life. We're okay. We're okay. Yeah, we're okay, you know. It's past Sunday, thank God. I spend time with the family, right? Uh, we we're, we're healthy, right? We have a roof over our head. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we want to live in Jerusalem, and of course, we own Mashiach, and, and of course, we're in Galos. But but overall, we 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 look at ourselves as we're okay. What the morning of Tisha B'av and the three weeks is supposed to remind us is that we're not okay. We're not okay. We're cruising. We're, 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 we're walking with a limp. We're, you know, we're not okay. We don't have a temple. We, 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 there's hardships, there's difficulties. There, there's, there's, there's hardships amongst our brethren. There's hardships from, from other cities. I just read today an article, right, uh, from my, from my, from, from, from my country of where I, I grew up, right, uh, not my country, right, but uh, Canada, one of the leaders, right, talking about how terrible the Jews are. It's, it's an article. We read it. It's, it's not. No, it's not going to affect. It's not going to. We're not okay. And 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 Tishbav and the morning is supposed to remind us that, because we're supposed to reflect and say, look at all the hardship that's happened in the last two and a half thousand years. Look at the destruction since the destruction of the temple. The Jewish people have been here and been there. And yes, there's been periods of times it's been okay. But all the pogroms. All the ex expulsions, all the all the all the deaths. We're grateful to Hashem that we're living in a time and a country that allows us, but we're not okay. And the only way to remind ourselves that we're not okay, God, I'm not saying we're we're bad. That's not what I'm saying. But we're all walking with a limp. And the only way to remind ourselves of that is by mourning. Is by, by sitting on the ground on Tisha B'av, right? Is by through the three weeks, you know, uh, right? Not listening to music, right? Doing things that remind you of, of, of mourning to change your schedule. And we'll talk about that again as we speak about more details in the next classes. But, but we have to remind ourselves that we're, we're not okay. We're not okay. Now, one of the things that we have to focus on is that we can't repeat the, the, the mistake of the spies, right? What was the mistake of the spies? And I think I spoke about this idea in, in, in the morning minute, right? Uh, by Parsa Shlach, right? But if Shimon Schwab says that, that the, the spies saw one thing, right? Which was totally different than what the purpose was. Right? They saw giants, they saw funerals, right? And they thought it was a country, Eretz Yisrael was a country that was, was eat, eating its people. There was, it was abnormal things going on there, right? <coughs> Excuse me. And, and they, they totally mislooked at the situation. 
their glasses were totally fogged. That dirt on their glasses. And Rav Simon Schwab says, we, we, cannot, we cannot repeat the, the, the mistake of the spies. We have to clear our glasses. We have to look at the reality that we're in and say, we are not okay. We're walking with a limp. We're in exile. How many times a day do we think, and I'm talking to myself, trust me, I'm not perfect, far from it. How many times a day do we think, oh, we're in exile? Oh, we're in exile. <laughs> we're not in exile. Come on, I have a house, I, have a, I own my house. I, have, I pay off my, 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 my mortgage, right? I own two cars, three cars, right? I, 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 I even have a, a timeshare. I, I have a lake house, right? I, I own an airplane, right? Whatever it is. <laughs> in exile? Not me. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, Mashiach. Yeah, yeah, Eretz Yisrael. Of course, spiritual. Yeah, of course. We're in exile. How many times a day do we think about it? How often do we think about it? That is where Rabbi Sacher Fran is quoting from Rabbi Schwab, and that's where Chaim Freeland is trying to point out to us that the mourning process in this period of time, we, we can't think about it all year round. Big study can do. Right? Some people wake up every every night at Chatzos. Right? Some people don't go to sleep before chatzos, but whatever. Right? Uh, some people wake up and they say tikkun chatzos. They mourn about the destruction of the temple. But but uh, us normal people, not normal. Us us regular people. Everybody's normal. Us regular people. How often do we think about it throughout the year? It's hard. It's hard. But the the three weeks, this period of time, is supposed to awaken us. Every section of of the calendar. Every time has its own avoda. We spoke about this many times. Has its own service, has its own purpose. This period of time that we're in is, a, is a, the time, the purpose of this time is for us to reflect and to remind ourselves that we're in exile. And we do that through mourning. We do that through, through reminding of what, we, what we're missing, what we lost. We do that through reminding ourselves and realizing what we lost. And as we said, yes, you should read about the greatness of the of, of, of the temple and the spirituality of the temple. And those are important things. And we'll touch upon some of those things, God willing, in the later classes. But I think something that's more practical for us is, is, is to realize what, what we lost in the sense of so many the tragedies that have happened. I think that's something that we could relate to more. Who hasn't had a tragedy in their life? Who? Who doesn't know someone that had a tragedy in their life? Who hasn't, every time, thank God, there hasn't been bus bombings in a long time and it shouldn't, but every time there's a bus bombing, cringe and say, oh, did I know someone or not? Or, and that's just in the last couple of years. That's something that we can relate to. That's something that we can reflect on. You know, uh, the, the, there's, an, there's, there's this idea that someone was saying that, really, Rabbi, we need to have Tishbub now. We have Israel. We have Jerusalem. And I look, there's peace in between Egypt and Israel, right? Uh, they're, 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 we have our own land. We're prosperous. We're uh, now, uh, we have more, you know, Fortune 500 companies on the stock market. I, we're doing great. We're advanced in medical and, and, and all the different advances. And it's great. Look, what are we mourning for? And he looked at him and he said, there's no tsaris. There's no stabbings. There's no shootings. No bombings. Really? There's no threat from Iran, from other countries? No threat to Jews all over the world? Even here in America? The anti-Semitism that's going on? There's no threat? You have no threat to us? Really, there's nothing to mourn about? We're thankful to God that allows us the beginning of the redemption that we have the land of Israel. 
We're able to go there and pray at the Kotel and understand, try to understand a little bit what we're missing. <coughs> but you're telling me that that's it, that we're not in exile anymore? You're telling me everything's fine, everything's great? No suffering anymore? And friends, that's what we have to reflect on. As we started off the class, call him Asabo, Yishalayim, whoever mourns over the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem will see it's rebuilt and see its joyous time, and whoever doesn't, and if the temple is not rebuilt in your times, it's as if you destroyed it. My friends, this is what it means. But not understanding what we're missing, but not mourning over it, but not realizing that the, the, the mourning itself is the rebuilding. By, by recognizing what we're missing, it's the, the rebuilding of the temple. That's its purpose for us to recognize and to, and, and to continue, continue living within the temple through the morning. <clears throat> As we quoted Napoleon, said such a people, of course, eventually will be back in their homeland. Because there's no other nation in the world that remembers and mourns something that happened a couple hundred years ago. A thousand years ago. Because it's part of who we are, and that's why it's in our prayer. That's why we break a class on my wedding. Because it's part and parcel of who we are. We have to remember that we're limping, not to forget that we're limping. It's a reminder. It's a connection to who we truly are. That's what mourning's about. Wherever you are, mourning for the temple, which we're talking about now, mourning for loved ones, connecting you to them, making a part and parcel of, of, of you with them. So let's reconnect and try to remember, as we said, not to be like the spies. Make sure that our glasses are not fogged. Make sure that we're not have dirty glasses and realize that we are in exile. We're limping. We might be limping in a fancy car in a big house, but we're limping because that's not all it. There's more to life. There's more to the Jewish people. <clears throat> and that's the idea of this period of time in the morning. And that's why morning is rebuilding. By, by morning, by, by connecting, by recognizing what we lost, by recognizing what, what, what trans, what, what's happening to us through the destruction, then we'll start refocusing our lives, reflecting and saying, how could we start rebuilding it? How can we get back to where we were? So checking our, our, our deeds, making sure that we're nice to our fellow person, making sure that our relationship with Hashem, with God is, is being strengthened. By mourning, by recognizing what you lost, it allows you to start the process of fixing that limp. Mourning is rebuilding. So my, my blessing to all of us, and God willing, we'll continue in the next two classes. We'll go more into details, right? Uh, next class, more in the, the, the three weeks, and, and some of the things that transpired and, and lessons from those, from those things directly to things that we have to work on. And then the last class, it's a three-part series. The last class, God willing, we'll talk more about Tisha B'Av directly, uh, learn some stuff from the Kinos, some, some stuff from the Kinos, we have, thank God, in a time we have a great kindness program, right? And, uh, you know, this year we'll have it also. We, 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 we talk about the kindness, but we'll talk about it in the class and, and lessons from Tisha B'Av and how we're supposed to connect to these ideas more in detail. But today was more of an overview to remind us and to, to awaken us. And I'm talking to myself, no, we are limping. We have to realize that. So my blessing to all of us so that we, we, we clear our glasses and we, we recognize where we, true, where we truly are. Be grateful to Hashem that we're able to own our homes and live with prosperity. But at the same time, not forget that we're still limping. Wishing everybody a wonderful night. Thank you for joining us.